Hello and welcome to the Art Channel. It's Grace Adam and Joshua White and this week we're going to be talking about Sigmar Polka who has a retrospective at Tate Modern which runs until the 8th of February. The show is called Alibis and it covers Polka's work from 1963 to 2010, the year of his death. Yes, it's a very large show, um, which is typical of Tate to Modern, uh, devoting one whole half wing of the building to his uh, long career. Um, of course, a Polka is associated with a generation that includes Kiefer and also Gerhard Richter. And there is some overlap because he exhibited with Gerhard Richter uh, in a style they ironically called capitalist realism, which um, introduces the exhibition with this interest in uh, commerce and advertising and, adver uh, and ma marketing uh, products um, that were beginning to be distributed in post-war uh, Germany, West Germany. Yes, the first room is interesting. It has a series of very um, sparse, um, pastel coloured paintings of sort of uh, bars of chocolate and plastic bars and a set of kind of three very plain shirts. Um, so it's a it feels a little bit pop arty, but of course, as Josh says, you know, it's, it's an era of consumerism with not that much to consume. And they're kind of sort of feral pop art paintings. They feel very different from American pop art. Yes, it's, a, it's an interesting point. There's something cruder. Um, more ironic perhaps, um, a little bit more subversive. Um, I think the immediate um, comparison is with uh, Roy Lichtenstein mm -hmm. and they remind me of uh, Lichtenstein's uh, descriptions of golf balls and sponges. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Polka takes uh, a slightly sort of clumsier approach, they're less faithful mm -hmm. in uh, reproduction. And you can see him sort of teasing this new system of capitalism that's emerging in post-war Germany mm -hmm. with um, a kind of inquiry about uh, representation and that setting up of uh, an interest in um, titillation and mm -hmm. planting a seed of desire. Mm -hmm. And he is very interested, and it's a very diverse, huge exhibition, but I think he's constantly interested uh, in uh, how images lie, how we can't trust images, how images are more complex, and he doesn't trust the system set up to help us to read images, and he sort of uh, lays out that manifesto in the first room. And he's questioning authority throughout his, his life, and you can see that to the extent in which he's questioning also art mm -hmm. and uh, the authority of artists and there's a room uh, where he explores or rather kind of satirizes a systems art in the 1960s he makes uh, a kind of a shed mm -hmm. using potatoes um, and he's clearly kind of a teasing artist who took this idea of mathematics of seriality, of systems, um, they, they took it very seriously mm -hmm. and he's sort of questioning it and subverting it. I think you're right, I think he feels at liberty to uh, use the systems and kind of abuse the systems. Um, there's always a kind of tongue-in-cheek aspect to the work, but in some ways it's very serious. He, he makes, as you say, this bizarre, beautifully made kind of gazebo out of uh, wood with a little potato at each intersection. Um, and it makes you smile. Um, they're quite wry, I think. And then in the same room there is a, a plastic bowl with some bamboo shoots um, standing in it called the, the resuscitation of bamboo shoots. And again, it's a look perhaps at Arte Povera and all these very serious, kind of cool, abstract art but underlying it, or sort of running as a thread through the exhibition, is um, a serious attachment to the role of the artist. What is the role of art in society? Um, is it, um, the, in a sense, the, the purpose of the artist to be prophetic, to be the outsider, to be the witness? Um, to question ideas of truth while at the same time setting standards for truth. And um, he uses his own body as a subject in that rather beautiful piece where he copies the, the lines on his hand and reproduces them in a pair of uh, panel, uh, panels made using uh, material. They're quite fascinating paintings actually. In one way they're very simple. Again, they're quite kind of humorous, but as you say, they're painted on um, sort of quite kitsch lurex fabric and fabric and wallpaper and 
and commercially available patterns occur in lots of the work. I think initially because they're quite kind of bourgeois and then they become a sort of kitsch uh, comment. Uh, but I think, yeah, you're right, this idea of the position of the artist is something he's always tackling. And of course, I mean, when I look at those paintings, I think of things like palm reading and mm. um, fortune telling and, uh, as you say, kind of um, being the front of knowledge. He's quite interested in that. But he's also using a rather kind of uh, disregarded aspect of the body as a self-portrait. So instead of painting his face, he's using his own, as it were, skin. And you can see later artists um, picking up ideas, um, borrowing ideas, in a sense, from Polka. Um, when we move through the exhibition, through the 1970s, when he becomes very uh, radical and experimental, he moves to the country, um, makes collaborative works with other artists. He's sort of questioning uh, this idea of the artist's um, hand and the commercial value mm. of artworks made by a singular artist. Mm. And it is a decade, I think he truly drops out, he experiments with drugs, he experiments mm. with uh, living in different places, he moves to New York, he travels to Pakistan, to Afghanistan, makes um, quite strange sort of artist's home movies, and as you say, um, really experiments with making work in very, very different ways. I think um, as we move through the exhibition, there's a very interesting painting called Scissors, mm. um, which is uh, uses his kind of signature uh, dot matrix way of working. And it's an image of um, a, a Polish woman who was supposedly had powers, uh, and these scissors are kind of levitating in front of her. And again, it's this question of whether she is a shaman, whether she's a trickster, whether she has kind of a, a connection to another universe. And it's something that keeps coming up in his work. But that is a really powerful figurative image, I think. Yes, a very large-scale painting, very striking, of this woman commanding these scissors to move in front of her. But he's sort of found his voice at this mm. point, I think. He's found his subject matter. Um, he's beginning to kind of interrogate surfaces and materials, um, the symbolic value of uh, images, and he borrows from history, um, including Albrecht Dürer, where he takes the curlicues um, these little motifs from a 16th century print and paints them very deliberately um, over a painting which has also accidental marks so that he both surrenders control of these pigments while at the same time applying this very graphic mm -hmm. element that he's appropriating from history. I think you're right, at this point in his career and in the exhibition, because it is chronological, he is, he is good at using materials, he understands his source materials, so in a way he can relinquish a little bit of control, but make these very powerful paintings. And he moves between abstraction and figuration um, very deftly, very easily, I think. And all the time I'm conscious of the parallels with other artists in his generation, Besselitz, Richter, Kiefer, and perhaps where they converge most is in the Watchtower mm. series. Uh, we talked earlier about the Anselm Kiefer show at the Royal Academy, and this was very reminiscent of Kiefer's interest in history, and here Polka is addressing um, contemporary um, anxiety in Germany around uh, the, the wall that ran through East and West Germany, separating, as it were, the communist bloc from the capitalist West. Um, but also it's very reminiscent of recent uh, Nazi mm. experience. And so these watchtowers become emblematic in um, big paintings of this uh, concern with surveillance and power and authority. And he's playing with effects, mm. isn't he, on the surface of these paintings, so that over time some of them uh, fade, begin to fade, because he's using um, uh, light-sensitive uh, silver oxides mm. that are used in photography. And I think you, you're right, they are, they are paintings that can be read, appreciated, approached in very, um, uh, very different ways. They are about boundaries, about surveillance, about hunting, about concentration camps. And he's only a couple of years younger than Kiefer, so born uh, in 1941. And, and through the exhibition you do see drawings, biro drawings, little swastikas in them. There's always references, but they are much more oblique, I think. They're part of a, a bigger practice. But these are stunning paintings, and he uses a stencil to make these uh, watchtowers. And as you say, they're disintegrating, they're blackening over time, which I think is quite interesting the way they change it. 
And he's also implying um, sometimes quite toxic paints. He uses um, uranium to make a very interesting series of bright, lurid pink uh, images. So he's got this kind of fascination with process, materiality and effect, and also transition or instability in time that he can't fully, as it were, order and control. Mm. And he has talked about, and I think he's interested in, in alchemy, or the idea of alchemy, so obviously that comes into the way he works and the materials he uses. In the last room, there's an amazing, uh, striking image called The Illusionist, um, which is figurative, and it's made in layers um, with gel, and he's managed to kind of rake the surface. Um, and you have kind of one painting on top of another. Uh, a woman is seated with uh, various uh, spirits uh, hovering over her, and two illusionists, one either side. But it's a difficult painting to read, um, I think taken from old engravings, and I think at the time he was looking at holograms. So it's, um, it's fascinating and it's, um, it's quite refreshing actually when you come from some of these kind of rooms with huge dark yeah. abstract images and this is quite a kind of um, sharp image. It's quite humorous mm -hmm. too isn't it and playful but ultimately uh, the illusion, illusion is, is himself, mm -hmm. is the artist uh, making illusions, artificial images uh, that question truth. Mm -hmm. Um, and explore the, the power of surfaces and uh, of the uh, marked and made image. Mm. I mean, he's a, an artist who is very difficult to categorise, a huge output and, and darting uh, with great skill from one area to another, so less famous perhaps than some of his contemporaries, and outside of the system, and I think for that reason, uh, an important painter. And Gerhard Richter remarks that they were you know, close friends working together in the 60s, and they diverge. Mm. Richter remained very analytical and uh, intellectual, whereas uh, Polka becomes sort of diverted by a kind of hallucinatory uh, trip, um, a willingness to really explore and experiment with lifestyles mm. and artistic process and subject matter. Mm. So it's all in all, it's a, it's a challenging show. It's very um, encyclopedic, um, but uh, well worth seeing and rewarding, I think. Definitely. Thank, Thank you. you.